Hi, I'm Bobby Brown, makeup artist, and I'm here with Tweezerman to teach you everything about how to shape the brows. My model today is my daughter-in-law, Pyle, and she has the best brows. But I'll tell you the first thing you need to do is the shape, is really decide what shape suits your face. And I do believe that people are born with a great shape brow for their face, but you just have to define it. So the brow should be, literally should start close to the little corner of the eye and it needs to really go on a diagonal and so it ends where at the end of the eye and the best thing is to work on the arch because when you have the arch that's three quarters of the way, then that is the perfect place. And I'll show you how to do that first with cleaning up your brow hair and then filling it in. The best time to get your brow hairs and to tweeze them, I think, is right out of the shower because it hurts less. Have you done your brows after the shower? How do you yeah. normally do them? Mm -hmm. Same. I am literally in love and obsessed with this tweezer. I've been using this tweezer uh, my entire life, my entire makeup artist's life. The best way to do it is in the direction of the hair growth. Because if you do it the opposite, you will break off the hair and it'll just grow in that much quicker. Brush the hair up with a spoolie to see the best shape. And there you could see the little hairs that you need to get. You could do this at home. Make sure you have good light. Daylight is by far the best light. And always after you get a few of the hairs, st stand back, look and see, because once you take away too many hairs, it's kind of hard to pull them back. I suggest tweezing the brows before you fill them in, because sometimes if you fill them in and then tweeze them, you've taken off hairs that you don't necessarily want to, so always look at them with a clean brow. I also happen to love a full brow, so I don't like to make them too thin. What I really also love about these tweezers is that the tips are hand filed and they work so well. Besides tweezing brows, we keep tweezers in our kitchen and there's always someone that has a splinter or something that needs to be pulled out and these do the trick. And you normally get your brows done professionally, correct? I do because I don't trust myself. Oh, but you trust me. I do. Okay, good. <laughs> Another tip is you can keep a tweezer in your car because that is the best way to see the little hairs that you can't see at home. And please just do it at stoplights, not while you're driving. Now I'm gonna show you how to fill them in. You can either use shadow or you can use a pencil. I like to use two colors because sometimes you go too dark and you don't wanna go too dark. So I'm gonna fill it in first with a lighter color. And you start at the hairs on the inside, you brush up in light feathery strokes. I always start with the lighter color and then add a little bit of the darker. And I really like brows best when there's a flat edge at the inside. And by lifting the brows, you could actually draw in a shape and add a little bit of lift especially those of us that need a little bit of lift. It's a great way to, to really open your eyes by just making sure the brows have the arch. So after I fill it in, I will look to see what else needs to be done. Now, brow scissors, you have to be very careful, but what you do is you brush the hair up. The pile doesn't have too many unrulies, but if you have unrulies, you just literally Clip, just the long hairs. And I know a lot of men that do this, so this is something that I think all guys should have their wives do, is help them with their brows and cut the top of the hairs. You must have had yours done recently because they look pretty good. The angled brow brush and spoolie is really great because it allows you to separate, lift, and fill in tiny little strokes because that really makes the most natural brow. And if you're using a brush, just like with the pencil, a gentle hand, brush up as you go. 
It's always easier to add more than to take away, but I have a trick for that too. If you ever do your brows too dark, just take a powder puff with a little powder on it and it will totally soften it. But again, I like a strong brow, but I like the brow to be natural. I don't like overdone brows. I like a more natural brow. So here is the difference with and without. What you do is you dip it in, you gently tap off the excess, because if you don't, it will fall on the face. And I really like to use it the way the hair is growing. Go up, fill it in. Take a step back, look, and you could see how it's defined, but not overdone. So I think it looks really good. Is that strong enough for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Another trick is to take your base color, your eyeshadow base color, and I'm using this shaping brow brush just under the brow bone, and that just helps clean everything up and give a nice lift. And it's the perfect brush for that because it really does allow a dense amount of the shadow on top. Everyone's brows are different, so the trick is to make sure Having the right tools makes it so much easier. Again, you just make sure it's little feathery strokes, it's lifted. And let's see if it matches. Pretty good. You see there's one more little hair that I missed. See how easy it is with the right knowledge and the right tools? Anyone could be their own eyebrow expert. You look so pretty. Thank you.